Hey guys, welcome to my review of the 2022 Trek Domane AL3 disc. I've been using this bike for about three months. I've done 1,500 kilometers, 800 of them outside and about 650 inside on the trainer. So I've really used this bike a lot. So before we start, this is my own bike. I paid for it with my own money. I'm not being told what to say. So all of this is my own opinions. And yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we are going to weigh it. So first we're going to weigh the entire bike and then we'll weigh the wheels separately. So the weight of this one is 11.42 kilograms. Okay, so the rear wheel weighs 2.24 kilograms. So that's the tire, the brake, the cassette, all that stuff. Okay, so the front wheel weighs 1.75 kilograms. So overall wheels weigh four kilograms, which is quite a lot. So the weight was 11.42 and that's with pedals and two water bottle cages. So the weight of the frame and the wheels alone would be a bit less than that. So the bike I had before this was a hybrid bike and that was also quite heavy. This one is 12 kilograms. The previous one I had was about 16 kilograms. So this isn't the lightest road bike you can buy. It's probably not the lightest road bike you can get for the price. But the good things are is that I think it looks quite cool. It's in a nice white color. When it's sunny, it's actually sort of like a reflective material rather than just a plain boring white. It is worth pointing out that the white color is an absolute magnet for dirt. So if you don't like to clean your bike after every ride, then I would recommend not getting white, go for a darker color. Yeah, so I think it looks quite nice, much cooler than my hybrid bike. So yeah, that's the angle I'm coming from for this review. It's not, a review from someone who's ridden loads of road bikes. It's someone who's coming from a hybrid bike to their first road bike. So if you're in the same position, then it might be quite useful for you. But if you want to see this bike compared to lots of other road bikes, then it's probably not the video for you. Okay, so let's talk about the gearing. It comes with a Shimano Sora group set and the gears on the front are a 50 and a 34. And the gears on the back range from a 32 to an 11 tooth cassette. So for me, I wish it had a few more gears, but I'm a heavy guy and I live in a very hilly city. So probably for most people, you'll be just fine with this. But yeah, I wish I had a few more. Sometimes on the roads near here, I find even in the lowest gear, I'm cranking away at like 60 RPM, which isn't ideal. And especially if you were to add some weight to the bike through like a panniers or bags or something like that, you would definitely want a few more gears, I think. But on the top end, it's definitely fine unless you're really shooting down some hills, then you never really spin out, unless you're like a pro, which I'm not. So yeah, that's quite good. The gears are good. I'm very happy with it. For reference, I am 185 centimeters tall, and this is a size 58, and it fits me perfectly. I have no complaints. I'm not the most flexible guy, but it is quite a comfortable bike. Slam the stem here, so you can get about an inch lower on the front, which is quite cool. I don't have any complaints with how comfortable it is. And that's coming from a hybrid bike and that used to have suspension on the front. So compared to that, obviously it's a bit harsher, but I've never had any pain or anything like that. Obviously, if you do have that, you should get a bike fit or something like that. Fiddle it around with the saddle position, the handlebar position, just to make sure it's comfy. And once you've got all that locked in, it should be fine. Just make sure you buy the right size. So if you're coming from a hybrid bike, it's worth noting that the hand position on a road bike is a bit different. So normally your hands will be here on the hoods. And then from this position, it's easy to change gear and brake. So to change gear, you just push either one of the flaps inwards or both of them inwards together. And then to brake, you just pull the handle towards yourself. You can also place your hands here, which is called being in the drops. This makes your body lower and more aerodynamic, so you can go a bit faster. So you can also have your hands in this position, which is the most upright and least aerodynamic position. If you're finding the video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thanks very much. So it comes with a lot of mounting points for various different accessories. So you've got two screws at the top where you can put a top tube bag. You've got two tubes on the front bit here. 
and then two more screws on this bit as well. So you've got space for two water bottles and a top tube bag. You've also got some mounting holes on the back where you can put panniers, which I've done and it works fine. I got the Trek one, so maybe you want to, if you're gonna buy them, make sure they fit properly. If you stick with the same brand, then there should be no problems. You can also put fenders on, which I've not tried yet, but this should be all right. So the frame is aluminium, but you've got a carbon stem. So this will absorb some of the harshness of the road. So you don't feel it in your hands as much. So yeah, I've been on various like hundred kilometer rides and I've never felt any excessive amounts of pain in my hands afterwards or anything like that. All right, let's talk about the tires and the wheels. So the wheels are both disc brake front and back. And yeah, like I said, there's lots of hills here and on the descents, I've never had any trouble with the brakes. So I've just had to adjust the brake tension wire once, but that's just standard bike things, nothing specific to this bike. So yeah, 800 kilometers on the road and just had to do that once. The tires are Bontrager R1 lights. And these so far, I have not had any punctures. I've never even had to do anything with these. So these are really good. The grip feels much better than my hybrid bike. They're smooth ones, but there's a little bit of knobbliness on the side. Yeah, so 800 kilometers and no punctures whatsoever, which I think is very good. The roads here aren't amazing. They're a bit bumpy, but nothing too bad. Just normal, normal roads really, probably about the same as they are in England. So if you're coming from a hybrid bike, the seat will be a bit of a change. On hybrid bikes, you get the very wide, comfortable seats. But on this one, you have quite a skinny one. And actually it will surprise you because it is actually really quite comfortable. It's got a bit of squidge, but overall it's very nice. So both of the wheels are held in with a through axle, which is supposed to make it very stiff. It's easy to take the wheels off. I take the back wheel off almost like every day just to put it on the trainer. So the tire clearance is actually quite wide. The tires it comes with are 28 millimeters, but it says you can go up to 32s, which is pretty damn wide. So you probably whack some gravel tires on this and you'd be fine. So the wheels are tubeless ready, but the tires aren't. So if you want to convert to tubeless, you'll need to buy new tires. Okay, so that's most of the specs of this bike done. So what are the good things and what are the bad things? So some of the good things are, actually no, let's do the bad things first. So the bad things are, it is quite heavy at around 11.5 kilograms. So for the amount of money you're spending, you could probably get a cheaper you could probably get a lighter bike for the same money, but I came from a hybrid bike. So this is the lightest bike I've ever ridden. And to be honest, the difference from my old bike, which is about 16 kilograms was massive. This is so much easier to ride up hills. It's so much faster in a straight line. It handles much better. You have a lot more confidence in it and it's just a lot more fun to ride really. So yeah, I think if you're coming from a hybrid bike, any good road bike you get or any mid range mode road bike you get will be fine unless there's something glaringly wrong with it, which there isn't with this bike. So most of the weight of the bike is actually in the wheels. So if after like a year or so you fancy an upgrade, you can always get lighter wheels, which is probably worth doing because these ones weigh a lot. The rear one with the cassette, the tire, all that, that weighs about two kilograms and the front one weighs about 1.5 kilograms. So yeah, the wheel set is very heavy, but the frame itself isn't too bad. So yeah, you could definitely save some weight if you were to upgrade the wheels. But for like a beginner like me, you'll probably be fine for a while. Anyway, for me especially, I could save a lot more than two kilograms just by losing weight myself. <laughs> so since I got this bike, I've ridden about 1500 kilometers, both inside and outside. So in that time, I've never had a puncture and I've never had a gear drop. So yeah, the group set is reliable. It's much, much better than my old bike and it shifts very quickly in comparison. There's no rattling really. All I've had to do is lube up the chain a few times, clean it off, and that's about it. So I did have a bit of a problem at first with the seat post slipping, but I fixed this by applying some carbon paste to the seat post and that fixed it. So since then it's been absolutely fine. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about the bike, I'll try my best to answer them. Okay, so that's everything. So if you enjoyed the video, then please thumbs up and give it a like. And if you want to see more, you can subscribe. Anyway, thank you and I will see you in the next one.